Welcome to a quite technical session about distributed processing. I think we invented, yeah, distributed processing. David, did you know it? Three, four years ago? Maybe something around that. Distributed processing, when we invented that long time ago. Three years ago? Three, four years? I think so. So, and we added a lot of new functionality inside the distributed processing, and we thought it might be a nice idea to show it what has been added and how it could be, uh, could be and can be used and is already used by various customers and for, for different types of, of to, 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 to satisfy different types of needs. So what will I cover? I will tell you why and how you should use distributed processing, show you some use cases, talking a little bit about integration into switch, how to get more control about the whole processing, uh, even using distributed processing as a Windows service is possible, of course. Um, some tips, tricks, Heinz troubleshooting and of course some words about how to license all the components of distributed processing. So, why and how? Why should you don't process files locally on, this, on, 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 on your main server? just to discharge capacity on your main server. It's always a problem when you run a lot of jobs and, and uh, that there might be limited space even when you have a multiple CPU machine with a lot of memory or, and other resources. Distributed processing is also a very nice and easy way to extend resources. So you do processing on a cheaper machine somewhere in your network. You can add remote temporary server Let's say in the let's say in the cloud, as shall speak louder. Okay, um, yeah, using it somewhere in, in Amazon or, or whatever, or a, on a remote destination in, in another location of your company. Um, Why using it? it? Configuration is simple. You can use it. Uh, con can control it by remote control using the UI. Um, you can avoid payload processing on systems where high availability, availability is needed, e.g. web service, so you don't want to process big PDF files maybe on, on your live system where, where are the services where your web shop is running. Other topics why it might be nice to use distributed processing is um, just using mixed environments when Mac OS Linux together, so one machine for this type of processing, another machine for for uh, for another task and you can also simply control where jobs are processed so you can can do a, even with, as we have a internal load balancing you can can say which type of jobs are processed on which type of server or machine or satellite how does all this stuff works uh, all components are communicating by a network protocol even the local server so when you start a local server on your local machine, even then we are communicating between the component who's doing the, the hot folder um, supervising and, and the processing via SOAP. Um, distributed load balancing, I already mentioned that, is in, uh, has in some kind of integrated load balancing, so the strength of the processing server, so in this type, uh, type what we are talking about, it's a satellite where the processing is done, we'll come to this in a minute, uh, is taken into account. So strong servers will process slightly more than, than weak servers. Um, and you have an integrated operating stability that you can even have a fallback for the dispatcher. So I've already introduced some of the words which are necessary to understand how distributed processing works. So we have the dispatcher who controls the satellites. And the dispatcher is not doing processing by itself, but just distributes the work. Where does the work come from? The work comes from either hot folder processing, so the dispatcher can observe hot folders where files are coming in, depending on, on the different jobs processed, and or they can get calls, CLI calls, from remote clients. So it's, when we call it about a client, it's simply a CLI component which has been some, some more parameters added uh, which tells the, the processing instance of PDF Toolbox that it shall not process the file locally, but send it somewhere else. And in the middle, or not in the middle, here it's in the middle, the, the satellites which are somewhere in the network which are doing the real processing of files. So 
so just for to what we are talking about. Common use cases, I already mentioned the first. We have the possibility that we have hot folders, which are observed by the dispatcher here. That's my opinion. But dispatcher, so dispatcher is looking how the files inside, if yes, which kind of job shall be produced, requesting a, a satellite to process them, sending the, it via the LAN to the satellite. The satellite is processing it. Uh, the dispatchers getting the processed files back and save it to the respective, respective output folder. Oh, a little bit not so good to see. I hope you can see here uh, client symbols. Another way I already mentioned this is that a client, so a CLI call, is started. Uh, it's requesting a dispatcher, and um, the dispatcher is assigning a satellite and all is done on the satellite and sent back, back to the clients. Or, of course, a combination of both. You can have a dispatcher which is observing hot folders as well as receiving calls from, yeah, from a CLI instance somewhere on, on another server or wherever in your network. So you can have the whole <coughs> flexibility. Um, the, yeah, the visualization I had there is a little bit misleading because it's not the real way communication works because there would be a little bit overhead and too much communications between the, in this case, between the clients and the dispatcher. So I'll talk a little bit about how we communicate or how the components are communicating with each other, which concept is be below the, this architecture. So a satellite registers itself at the dispatcher during the startup. It says, hi, I'm here, I want to work some, do something. And after that, a continuous communication has been held between the dispatcher and satellite. So they are always saying, hey, I'm still there. Oh, okay, you are, oh, you're still there, that's nice. How many jobs are you just doing? Okay, I'm doing five jobs, okay, thanks. And oh, I'm finished, and so all this communication is, is continuously done. And real processing is then done that here, here's the client, not so good to see, that a client requests a free satellite from the dispatcher. The dispatcher knows who is free, who has the most capacity. He's telling the client, okay, go to satellite number seven. The client says, now has now the IP from the satellite. It knocks on the door and says, hey, satellite seven, I have something to do for you. Okay, the satellite, okay, send here the file. The satellite is producing the file, is, is processing the file, and he received everything he needed from the client. So PDF, profile, whatever, all the even the HTML template when you want to have a have a template report. And then send sends all the results, all the produced files when you have a process plan files which are produced by the process plan, like, like reports or, or images, back to the client. And from the view of the client, and you see the output there, I'll come to this later, it always looks like, lit, like it has been processed locally. So it's easier for when you integrate a client that, uh, that you have all the information you need. So let's talk about possible <laughs> constellations. How could you integrate them? Um, one computer with multiple client instances it, it, for example, this is, this is something like workflow systems like Switch or, or File Train or so, um, is creating calls, sending it to the dispatcher and some satellites on a remote machine or on the same machine like the dispatcher, this is also possible of course, uh, is, process, are, uh, is processing the file and sending it back to the one computer. Classical use cases, for example, one web shop. You have a web shop, you don't want to have the files processed on your live system, but somewhere <coughs> on, on a different machine for, for stability issues or load issues, like I already discussed. And um, yeah, so put the work somewhere else. Um, another possible constellation, which has also been used quite frequently the last, yeah, last months and, and also years, is now that you have multiple web shops or multiple servers which are running somewhere, so doing different web shops, which are all run by your company, and they are all sending 
these jobs to one dispatcher, which is just hosting maybe a satellite on another machine or on the same machine, so you can do all the processing on, on a remote machine without having uh, so much multiple satellites there. So th this can be here on, on one machine. Why should I do that? I'll, I'll grab it a little bit in f f um, uh, to, to, the, to the last G, uh, last, last uh, foil of the presentation, um, because this needs a normal server license. This needs an additional server, uh, additional dispatcher license, which costs the half of the server license. But all these clients don't need any activation, don't need any license, so you can just use them without paying for them. So that's my, uh, quite nice um, possibility to, to, to just install it somewhere on your machines and you don't have to pay for it. Tom don't like it, but that's... You're not in sales, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not in sales, I'm the technical guy. Uh, but that's, that's a nice issue which can be done. Okay, so enough about talking. I'll just show you something how, how it all looks like in real life. So I have here the PDF toolbox. You can simply say here, start a dispatcher. No, I don't want um, a security code for that. And so the dispatcher starting up took some seconds. And as you can see here, well, this dispatcher is starting. You, I all want to, to show you I have here two parallel machines, which is the lower one is obviously Linux, and the upper one is um, a Windows machine, which are already running some satellites. You see here that's a satellite with the latest version. And um, so it's running, and for whatever reason, it's not getting up. So, and now the dispatcher is up. You can see here I have connected two satellites. I have configured two hot folders. Uh, so let's uh, have a look inside. The job editing looks like a normal hot folder setup with local folders. Uh, magazine ads shall be produced and yeah, log files shall be kept. And when I uh, throw in a file into the hot folder, let's say it here in, here they go. And let's see, zip, zip. Uh, I should start the job, of course, otherwise it will not process. But uh, here you can see they are started, and here on the Windows machine they were just jumping up one of these files, and the other file is also processed. And so they are not processed locally, but on the remote machine. And when we have a look on the uh, CLI output, some of you may know that, there is just an additional line at the top that this job has been distributed on the machine with just this IP over this part. In this case, it's a Windows machine with an IP ending with three. So quite easy to set up. And uh, yeah, and uh, distributed processing using the CLI works quite similar. You just set it up in, in CLI call, adding two parameters, it's dist and endpoint with the endpoint of the dispatcher and sending it to the uh, respective dispatcher who will distribute the work afterwards. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. Uh, there it is. So um, integration. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, it's quite easy to integrate and switch. Um, or another workflow system, I think David will agree that it's also possible in, in file train or so. Um, I just asked here an integrator, he's not here at the moment, hmm, he left. Um, just said, hey, do you have anything to say about switch and distributed processing with PDF toolbox? He looked and said, just works, no problems, nothing to, yeah, not, nothing special to do, because it's, it's quite easy to, to edit and switch. 
um, when you know about switch, you have these uh, properties of the configurator. You have just add the mode distributed processing, yes, and the dispatcher IP, which has to be yeah, with a, added with an appropriate port. And then switch is sending all the, the, the jobs from, not from every flow, but from this specific um, configurator uh, to um, just switch to it. Oh, there's my switch. There is my switch. We just add it here and you have switch, input folder, output folder. You can edit what I can define for each step in your, your um, flow in, in switch if it shall be distributed, processed, or locally processed. So you can send jobs which took a lot of time or, or consumes a lot of memory, like yeah, producing preview images for your web shop or whatever. You can distribute it to a more powerful machine somewhere to keep your um, switch machine uh, yeah, re reduced on load, which is quite easy to uh, configure. So, um, something to know when you integrate it into switch, processing will be counted as one process by switch. So you have these, yeah, it's a licensing stuff of, of switch, how many parallel processes are allowed, and sometimes that's, that's the thing, but it will be counted as one process. You have to set the configuration and switch accordingly. There are some settings when you want more details, just contact us. I've just put here the most mm -hmm. important things, uh, allow enhanced performance, and you can allow the configurator to use the maximum number of slots. And if something not work, the debug logging of, of a switch can be helpful to, to find the reasons why something may not work on your switch machine. But like I said, if you're a little bit familiar with switch, it's quite easy to set up and we didn't also you get so much didn't actually get get no complaint about any problems when using this reputed processing in switch and there are a lot of integrations already outside Mark? yeah on the previous slide um, you said processing is counted as one process yep that means that every file you process in this way is counted as one process or Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's the same as if you would use it directly on the sound. Genau, genau. For, for the view or from the, for, for Switch, Switch don't know that it's not produced on the same machine where, 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 where Switch lives, but, but because there is an, an, an client started, Switch is, <laughs> like, I lost some, like it's, it's not that intelligent, he's just call, calling PDF toolbox with the appropriate uh, yeah, syntax with a CLI with on the terminal and, and, and we are it's some kind of sh show it to switch like it has been processed locally but what yeah. that's actually not the case so yeah. we just make some you who switch we are doing something but actually we are doing it not on the same machine um, so get more control when you say okay that might be nice but um, what else can I can do? What can I configure? I, well, uh, there, you may run into some some issues which you want to have strictly defined, because you would say, okay, I have a satellite there, and but I don't want the the satellite on this remote machine getting all the processing power on this machine. I have to limit it because there are other processes limit uh, running. I have, let's say, sixteen CPUs, and I want just the satellite of PDF Toolbox get only the half of the processes so that it's not filling up this machine completely. You can um, set the number of parallel processes for satellites. So you can say this satellite is allowed to use four CPUs. PDF Toolbox is ru running each process using one CPU. We are not multi-threading there. And so you can define how many jobs are processed on this um, machine. How is this done? I'll skip this overview because we are going to it. This is quite, quite fast. It's, it's quite simple. When you start a satellite, it can simply be added by connections number of processes. So when you start a satellite, we can show you here on my machine. Starting a satellite on a machine is quite simple. It's just uh, terminating here this terminal, this terminal window. 
Tux. Okay. How do I start a satellite? Deleting his sample. I just say PDF toolbox, please start as a satellite and um, your dispatcher shall be the, the machine on, with the number this and that. And then I, I can say, so, say connections, let's say one, and now it only, because it has two, this virtual machine has two CPUs, it only uses one, and so only one job per, per, uh, per time will be distributed to this satellite. Okay, um, yeah, when you're using the, the UI, you can also start a satellite on Mac or on, on Windows uh, using the, the UI. There, you simply set the um, number of, uh, um, maximum number of files processed simultaneously using the server UI. <coughs> Another point, I already showed it on the, um, on the introduction uh, side. Um, get control which type of processing is done on which satellite. When you have a mixed environment or you have uh, yeah, different type of computers, you might feel the need that something is processed on, on a special machine. A, a good example for this is doing office conversion just on a Windows machine because you have Microsoft Office there. You want to make sure that office files are really converted in the way you want the, like they look, the user's experience too, so you want only <coughs> to do it on Windows, not on a Linux machine with LibreOffice where you have slightly differences or so, or you want to generate preview images on a, on a very powerful machine, on, on a cheap machine maybe, uh, like a Linux machine, or you want to send urgent jobs to powerful machines with a lot of memory and, 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 and high speed, so you could simply want to define that. Yeah, do you have the ability to take advantage of page independence of PDF and send individual pages across multiple satellites? No, we only send complete PDFs because that's that's also a matter of the of the different types of structures of the um, of a PDF when when you, we would have to split up, but to keep the resources because and and merging these separate processed files afterwards, where maybe the the font situation may vary because one of satellite let's say not all fonts are completely embedded and you embed this type of fonts on that for page one to one on, on satellite this and then you uh, integrate uh, and page two is sent to let's say a Linux machine and another font and afterwards you have to merge all the pages that wouldn't make sense wouldn't make sense that's not sorry is there a API available to the dispatcher so you can write your own uh, not yet but uh, we, are, we, are, we have this SOAP interface and in theory it could be used. We didn't so make it public at the moment, but uh, we, are, we are still, uh, Ulrich is just doing the other, other session, but we, we are still thinking about when you have a concrete or a use case, just let us know, we will we'll have a look on it, um, that we may open the, the dispatcher a API because it's, it's SOAP, so it, could be quite easy, but it's not fully doc documented yet, and we, we didn't open it because we still made some changes, <laughs> and we don't want to keep... keep uh, does it receive a binary stream of the output PDF yes. straight back? Yeah. Just going. Yeah. Um, so, okay, why define types of satellites? I already mentioned that it might be useful. I just showed here different operating systems, it could also be processing power or whatever. Even that you can easy, easily use it when starting a satellite, you just add a new parameter, one or two or three parameters, so you can, assign diff you can assign to a machine not only one type that you say, you do the office, but you can also say, do office and color conversion and do images. But, and say to another machine, but you do only do font embedding because I have all my fonts there. So you can define it on a either on a, on a hot folded job or when doing it, uh, doing a CLI command, just adding it and you want, you know what you want to process and you then you just know where to process this. And you, it's just a parameter to add. Um, yeah, like I said, for example, color conversion only on a Linux machine or uh, office on a Windows machine. 
um, like I said, just edit uh, on the CLI or edit as an additional CLI parameter when using the user interface for hot folder processing. Um, and something I can also show you, of course. Um, when you start here with satellite, you see here's already uh, an, an entry for types. So on the Windows machine, I set office, and on the Linux machine, I set color. It's simply an additional CLI parameter, like I showed you before with the um, with the connections here. I set simply satellite type office. Now I start the satellite. It's now registered as an office application. I could e either use it on a, on a CLI call when I start a, a, a processing somewhere, or I can do it in when I editing the, the hot folder jobs, but just adding here an additional CLI parameter, satellite type office. I know everything that comes into this hot folder is an office file, shall be produced on a, a Windows machine, and so I uh, set here the parameter. I start it and now I just go to the respective other hot folders. Uh, you see I have here two office files, one open office, one um, normal Windows uh, mi uh, Microsoft office file. I just throw it into the um, input folder and here on the Windows machine it's, it's uh, produced um, took some seconds because the separate Office applications are started, Microsoft Office and in this case LibreOffice. And processing is done, took some longer than I expected for whatever reason. Um, yeah, and now the log files are there and hopefully in the success order some, some more stuff from, from uh, testing. This has been produced on a on the Windows machine, so I have ensured that it's really. I hope this was the uh, wrong file. Just wanted to show you that it's really processed here using Microsoft Word on the on the Windows machine. So I have ensured that even when I, that I started the job on a Mac, it has been transferred to the Windows machine, has been produced there, uh, ensuring the that the uh, yeah, visual appearance were were kept. And, remain the same. Um, yeah, I could also add, of course, for, for the other hot folder, uh, I could even add here satellite type is color because I started here the Linux machine you see down here with the type of color. So I just added this to the job which we already had before. And when I throw in there a file sorry, into the in folder, you will see that they are not uh, be shown up here, but now they are processed on the Linux machine, so you can uh, process it wherever you want. Um, so, going back to my presentation. Um, what else is possible? There is, there is the headline missing. <laughs> okay, what for every reason? Um, uh, <coughs> no, no, the headline is there for whatever. So don't do it locally. Another parameter which enables even more control. Um, a dispatcher or a client can produce jobs also locally. Even if the job cannot be distributed, like, so like what's the case when, for example, extract images. Because when you have the possibility in PDF Toolbox using action, extract images, extract content, so everything within this PDF is extracted into separate files. Every image gets in separate file. And as we don't know, when we start the pro uh, processing, how many files will come out afterwards, which is just needs more information about the file, um, we, didn't, we don't distribute it. And um, so this cannot be distributed. This is not a distributed job. 
or which can all when it's all and then there is a fallback mechanism which says okay I cannot distribute this type of job that's a very special one then the fallback grabs uh, takes over and this file is produced locally and when you want to avoid this um, you can even disallow that it's also done um, locally when you have satellites which have no more capacity so they are all full all, all producing and um, after after a while the dispatcher or even the client may produce it by itself because it's requesting the satellite say hey do you are you are you able to produce no i'm still busy and uh, du during this communication he says okay i have a full license I, i'm set I, uh, I, I could produce, but I'm full, the satellite says, and then the dispatcher and client can say, I can uh, produce it locally. Uh, but this is normally th uh, a, a nice thing, that something will not stop. Uh, but sometimes this kind of local processing shall not be done for various reasons. So it can also be avoided using a, a parameter no local. So processing will be not done um, on the dispatcher or the client. And what happens in this case? What? What happens in this case? What happens? You get an error. There, there is a warning, an, an appropriate error level, error, error code that says no satellite available, locally processing not allowed, giving up. <laughs> uh, um, and but you can um, define it. It's not automatically. So you. Like I said, you can skip the parameter and you can even define the timeout for searching for a satellite. When you say, okay, I don't want to process it locally and it doesn't matter how long it takes till I get a free satellite. Mm -hmm. You can give also an additional parameter, timeout satellite, and say two hours. And so the dispatcher would try two hours to get a free satellite. Also with multiple... Uh, also with multiple processes. So it's a kind of... Uh, it's a timeout. Like I said, the parameter is even called timeout uh, dispatcher, I think it's in this case, in the timeout satellite. So how long does it take that for the search for a satellite which is free to process this okay. file? And, and afterwards it will be said, sorry, cannot produce. In, in this pipeline, the first in will be the first out? Yeah. <coughs> Normally, so yes. Kind of in the case of the multiple satellites or DC, yeah. They, they, will be, they will be held for, for the time, for the amount of time which has been defined. So I didn't try it with two hours, to be honest. That's, I have some <laughs> but, but, but some minutes I, I tried. And the, they are still waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. You will see that it's a, and you have also some information, waiting for satellite, waiting for satellite, waiting for satellite. And then some, it begins to run and then it's getting processed somewhere in the network. If you have eight slots, and, and when, when, when you have a satellite running, where eight jobs are running, the satellite, as I, as I said before, tells the dispatcher that he has no slot left, and, the, uh, the, um, and, and, and so the uh, dispatcher doesn't assign this satellite to a client call, or doesn't send mm -hmm. a file from the hot folder directly to, to the satellite, and when the satellite is done with the job, he tells the dispatcher, now I have a slot free and then the dispatcher grabs the f next waiting job and sends and assigns the satellite to do this job from that okay. client. And so it's, it's, it's a little bit like yeah, a queue which is, is, can be introduced there. And in any case, it's just one dispatcher um, that uh, is controlling the... I can't have multiple dispatchers. You know my presentation. There's even the, the possibility <laughs> to add a fallback for a dispatcher because that's a, that's a matter of uh, yeah, redundancy, of course, because you say, okay, I have multiple satellites. When one satellite, the machine stops or whatever, or is full or busy or crashing or whatever, I have fallback satellites. That was the first yeah, step which we implemented. And then customers came and say, okay, but what's with my um, 
by my, uh, my dispatcher. When the dispatcher stops, I have multiple satellites who do nothing. Yeah. That's, that's awful, of course. And therefore, we in integrated an uh, additional dispatcher. Um, the dispatchers are then working completely independent from each other. So uh, they don't share when, when you have run a dispatcher in a hot folder mode. They don't look both on the same hot folders. That, that's something we didn't integrate it because it will, uh, it's, it's a little bit um, awful to get <laughs> who will pick which file. And so we, we didn't integrate it that, that yet. And this was also not the request from, from customers. They said, I want independent dispatches for client calls from switch from my web server whatever and the satellites can now be connected to one or to both dispatches and um, when you start a call from one of the from of the satellites you can e either assign it to set dispatcher a or dispatcher B or both and the first free dispatcher, well, which re responds first, uh, will dispatch the job, assigning it to a satellite. And the satellite, like I indicated here, you have a dispatcher A and you have a dispatcher B. And the satellite can either assign to both dispatchers or just one um, dispatcher. So for, for various reasons. So you have the whole, the complete possibility to, to, to configure it as you want it. So you have these, these possibility to send it to satellites on both, on, on two ways or even three ways. So, okay. um, but um, that's usually one fallback should, should be enough. I talked a lot of, uh, just a moment, I talked a lot of, um, uh, this issue with, um, with uh, integrators in advance and all of them said <coughs> we for, for a dispatcher we use a very small very lean very thin Linux machine it's totally sufficient it's, it doesn't do that much so until you are not processing until you are not processing of course but that's not normally not the case uh, as, as you normally configure it in that way that you have enough capacity on, on the satellites um, there was a question. Yeah, is there any alerting or monitoring for the satellite? Satellite goes down, do you get an alert or is there any recovery mechanism? Um, you can observe it uh, manually. There is there's some kind of monitor inside that you can also use by, by CLI. So you can, can, can have an overview, you can, can connect it to a dispatcher and the dispatcher shows you which satellites are online. Um, you can also run, I'll show it later on, uh, you can also run a satellite as a, using Windows as a service or on Linux as a, as a daemon, so it's, it, it starts automatically and so you have the, the flexibility to, to do observing these processes by yourself as well. Uh, I already mentioned the timeout, you can either set a timeout for searching for a dispatcher or searching for a satellite but you can also define for, for a while now uh, also the timeout for processing itself. When you have a, have a job and say, okay, I don't want that a job talks longer than two minutes, three minutes on my machine. Then is something wrong with this file. It will also kill my RIP unit afterwards or whatever. You can even uh, uh, define this for the processing itself. And, and you can also define, like I said, the search for a, for a satellite and so on. And, uh, this timeout is even uh, is also um, available for normal processing, local processing. So when you have it locally, you can also do a timeout. What already the question was, you can using it uh, as a Windows service, a satellite, a dispatcher. <coughs> You can, can install it as a Windows service. So what's the, what, what does it mean? A Windows service that is, means that no, um, or Linux, that no user must be logged in for processing. And uh, the, the software is instant there, instantly there after starting up the machine, which makes it easy. Because when you, even for observing, it's, 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 it's nice to, to have it simply <coughs> run. You can 
um, run it as a service, you can run the components the normal server, so far away from distributed processing, you can run the dispatcher, or you can run the satellite as a service on, on, on any machine. Um, installation, it's, uh, I will not bother you with that stuff. It's, it's written down very, com very completely in, in, in the CLI manual. You have to configure it using Windows in the services MSC, so you can set up which components shall, shall start there. Uh, when you do it in a Windows service, you can of course access it even remotely. So when there is a like, like a server or dispatcher running, or even a satellite running, you can go into PDF uh, toolbox and say connect to with remote server. You can connect to that remote running service on a Linux or a Windows machine. Configure hot folders, shutting it down, whatever you want. Um, of course, when you when we are talking about that. Uh, network parks paths should be accessible to the yeah to this service. Otherwise, you will get some or, or even network access must be accessible. And um, maybe when you do some uh, office conversion, some some additional folders must be granted access for doing this office conversion <coughs> using this service user. But that's all all written in the, the um, uh, documentation. Uh, as I already said, Linux, of course, can do it too. Um, there are already templates for Linux, how to install it as a, yeah, some kind of daemon as a service uh, in the installation package. Uh, any more questions, ask our support <laughs> or your, your administrator. Uh, I think it's very well documented how it, is, um, how it, how, how it works. Okay, Windows. Linux services. I'm nearly done. Kinds and troubleshooting. So what to take care of when setting up a distributed processing. Um, use a fast network, please. When you send around big files and you have a 100 megabit network, you will lose all the, the advantage in, 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 in maybe processing on a faster machine when the network is slow. Anti antivirus software using is maybe not such a good idea, Other, uh, <laughs> except you allow the, um, the software, or our software uh, within this antivirus software that all the folders can be accessed without scanning, uh, all file types are allowed sending in the network, the web traffic is allowed, otherwise we, we had a, uh, a case with a customer where uh, the processing took 10 times longer than locally, which was not, uh, not, not, as, not as expected, of course, but the, the antivirus took so much time for sending and checking all the files which are sent through the network, which was a little bit, um, yeah, but this could also be solved. Just to point you in that direction that this should not be uh, forgotten when, when setting up. Even when, when setting up proxies, avoid them, make the network tr transparent. Um, when setting up distributed processing, try processing on a satellite. Remember, a satellite is something like a local, uh, the normal server. Try processing on a satellite first with some jobs, especially when you're doing office conversion. Try it with a user where the, the satellite is running, if everything works. Uh, and like I already mentioned, a small Linux server running CentOS Red Hat also is completely sufficient, sufficient as a dispatcher. There's not that much work done there. It's, it's just coordinating stuff. And we also, when you want to set up a dispatcher on a Linux machine, just call us. It's not in the distribution package, but there is a setup script available uh, which easily sets up a, a dispatcher on, on a Linux machine within some minutes. Um, Licensing stuff, um, a dispatcher needs a normal dispatcher license, costs the half of a normal server license. A satellite, which is doing all the processing, costs a normal server license. And a client, remember the machine who sends the jobs away, don't need any <coughs> license. So um, you can, can produce it just on your uh, can install the client just on your web server without any activation and simply send the jobs away to your production environment. 
So, questions. A lot of technical issues. Some questions were already asked. Some more questions. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, first one. Uh, will be tomorrow practical uh, session on this? Uh, you can do. There is no fixed plan yeah, for tomorrow. So if that's what you want, we, we yeah. And for the ones who are here tomorrow uh, in the morning when we start, we'll talk about what the subjects are that you're interested in, mm -hmm. and then we can see how we distribute that. Yeah. I'm, I'm because up. they have several different and practical questions on this, because I think this will match our needs for this type of processing. Yeah. Uh, but they have several questions, so we're not sure. going to go to this time, when they give me the time or something. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I, will, I will be glad to show you, even when you have um, yeah, to, what's, um, what, what can be solved. And it's like I already said, it's, it's very nice. Um, uh, issue. I uh, talked with uh, Sebastian Nafrot, an integrator of us, who has done a lot of them for a big German uh, school book publisher who merged, uh, moved nearly everything inside all these distributed processing. So they have, they have nearly do anything now using distributed processing somewhere in the network because they are producing for each book they produce, and you may remember school times, 300, 400 or more pages, um, preview images in three or four different resolution and sizes, so they, it would kill, not kill, but it would really bring load on their main production machine, and this has all been done now, or will all be transferred to a, to a, to a cheap Linux machine who's processing nothing else since uh, then than um, preview images all the day out of the switch workflow in this case. Is there any limitation in the number of the satellites that the dispatcher can control? No. no. We, are, we are not aware of them. So should be should so work. We have also scalability because at this at the moment we see that the uh, processing time is uh, totally engaged then we can just have a new machine or a couple of new machines and automatically the load will be yeah, yeah, and like I said, you can even control what's produced where when you, yeah, want to have time-consuming jobs. Let's say with a lot, with less, um, uh, with less um, amount of data transferred, maybe in the cloud somewhere. Let a, let a Amazon stuff do it, and other stuff, and to to avoid too much traffic into that because you're charged for that. But other stuff can be produced by in your house. You can easily add components to it. That's, that's a great advantage of distributed processing. And, and Tom will be happy to sell you a rental PDF toolbox for three months or so during Christmas time. It's also done by, by, by a lot of customers in the meantime. Would be this working if we install everything on the Amazon environment, uh, like ACQ machines and connecting them together? Yeah. Should work. You have, of course, you, you, there is an. an, 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 an hmm? Not? Um, it should work. It should work as long as you can connect uh, them to each other. So you might have to make sure there is fixed IPs, which is. Which you can your private lane, you include yes. your machine second, yes. and you install it. And you might have yeah. to make sure that they're on the same. I know Amazon has a, has a way to put them on the same segment so that there is no yeah. cost even to transfer from one to the other. So, yeah, you, you need to look at the configuration of the children. Yes. Would they want to provide a total scalability in terms of yeah. yeah. The reason is that uh, adding a server in Amazon is too, it's just not a few minutes. Yeah. And also, they provide also some kind of dynamic uh, scalability. Uh, yeah. Okay, there is a uh, issue with starting the satellites. But if you provide your machine, I know that the the system can manage by itself depending on the load of the full amount of uh, completing the server depending on the load. Yeah. So this way you have a yeah. totally dynamic yeah. not and only in terms of processing the load of yeah. uh, PDF stuffs, but also providing the server yeah. itself. Yeah. And of course um, what uh, what is integrated of course when you you can shut down of course a satellite during not not during processing but you can tell a satellite shut down 
It will register this at the dispatcher, produce every job or finish every job and then close it down and then you're done. So that's the way it works. So the rest of tomorrow? The rest of tomorrow. Can you share with me the slides? Sure, sure. They will all be every... every yeah. Yeah, everything will be shared afterwards. Looking forward. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions? No. Then Tom will be is just there waiting for you selling you some dispatcher licenses. Aren't you Tom? Yes, of course you are. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.